Welcome to the Fire and Earth podcast with your hosts, Jason Mefford and Kathy Gruber. Fire and Earth, giving you the keys to unlock your limitless potential. Welcome to another episode of the Fire and Earth podcast. I'm your co-host, Jason Mefford. And I am Kathy Groover, and we are going to talk today about something we all face, decision making. And bum, bum, uh, bum. Cue, uh, cue, um, cue the scary music. <laughs> oh, okay. I'll put that in in the, in the edit. Um, <laughs> you know, we all face times where, you know, do we, what is the song? Do, should we stay or should we go now? Um, do we stay? Do we go? Uh, do, we, do we say yes? Do we say no? Do we ask them out? Do we not ask them out? Do, you know, we were constantly every day faced with hundreds of decisions. What do we order for lunch? Which way do we drive to work? Do we go to work today? Do I call in sick? Do you know? And we do get to a point where we have decision fatigue, which is why going to the grocery store at the, store at the end of the day is not always a good idea because at that point you buy every cookie, cake, and candy that you want because you you're decisioned out. You're just exhausted from making decisions all day. Um, and the reason we're talking about this is I've had a couple clients in the last few weeks, coaching clients, <clears throat> who are really having trouble making decisions. One didn't know if she wanted to go back to her hometown with her girlfriend or if she wanted to stay here in Santa Barbara. And so we worked through that and came, had a couple really great um, tools to figure that out. So I thought we would talk about that today. Yeah, I think that's good. And and it's, you know, there's different ways to make decisions as well, right? Because there's, there's different tools and you can talk about some of those that you share with people too. Uh, but there's also kind of the what I kind of call like higher self decisions too, where you kind of check in with yourself yeah. intuitively as well. Um, but we can talk a, a little bit about too, because I think especially when it's, um, when it's major life issues, you know, we can do a lot of the 3d decision-making T accounts, you know, advantages, disadvantages, mm -hmm. but at the end of the day, we have to do what's, what's in our highest and best interest as well. Yeah. And I know I've I've had several of those kinds of experiences this last year as well in my life where, yeah. and, and sometimes the decision, you know, it's kind of like what we just talked about on the previous episode we just recorded about control is that a lot of times we want to control the timing of the decision too. Right. And sometimes um, we have to wait for the answer to come. And the waiting is the hardest part, you know, Tom Petty uh sort of thing too so all right so take us away so how how you've been helping your your clients kind of come through this and make decisions right well i'm a huge list person <laughs> kel surprise um but <laughs> one of the one of the things i tend to ask my clients is i do a little you know a little big plus sign and then it's you know let's use the it's stay go thing right so what are the what would the best things be of staying what would the worst things be of staying what would the best things be of going what would the worst things be of going? And we write those out in those quadrants. We see sort of where the heaviness, you know, what the heaviest quadrant is. We read them out loud. And I say, now that you've written that all down, what feels best to you? It's a great way for those linear decision-making um, because it illustrates and you know, really clearly <laughs> what the, you know, it's pros and cons, but it takes it one step further. Um, we used to call this Paris, I think this is called Paris window in hypnosis when you kind of do these quadrant sort of things. So we went through that and we did that and she looked them all over and she went, oh, it does sort of look like I'm leaning towards staying. Uh, and I said, yeah, and for your higher purpose, you know, you're in a place, you're regenerating kind of yourself, you're rediscovering who you are. From what you've told me, it sounds to me like you're leaning towards staying. She said, yeah, but I still don't know. And then the ex more excuses came, right? And so I handed her a quarter and she goes, what? And I said, take the quarter. She goes, are you going to have me flip a coin? And I went, I'm going to have you flip a coin. Mm -hmm. And she goes, oh, and I seriously flip it. Heads you stay, tails you go. And she goes, oh, this is, I said, heads you stay, tails you go. And she, she said, okay, heads I stay, tails I go. She flipped the coin and it landed and she went. And I said, what is it? And she said, tails, I guess I'm going. And I said, how do you feel about that? She goes, I was really hoping it would be heads. I said, great. Well, then you have your answer. Yeah. No, you, I think you clearly I, want to stay. And yeah, she goes, oh, God, you're right. Yeah, I do. Yeah. Well, and, and because, again, I don't know the whole situation, but if she was kind of getting pressure to want to go, right, because if, if the other person wants to go, but you want to stay, right, that's that ends up 
throwing a whole other kink into it. But I think that's a great example of kind of some easy um, work that we can do, because yeah. I think this is this is one of those things, too, with with even, you know, knowing what your higher self wants or what's in your best interest uh -huh. is we still have to do some work on our side, too. It's not yeah. like. You know, you can't be like, God, just tell me what to do. Send me some, you know, Send big sign. sign and I'll, and you know, it's like, no, go do the work, you know? And, and so I think that's an example of, you know, and, and often we get still get confused when we try to do that best thing, worst thing, you know, yeah. kind of thing, because we can, we can find issues on, on both ways. But then I love how you said, but what feels best? Yeah. Right. Because at that point, you're trying to check in with your higher self. And, you know, when I do that, I, I kind of ask myself questions uh, uh, silently in my head, right? And then I I kind of feel into my body and see how's my body feeling? Am I swaying one way or the yep. other? Am Leaning I getting, into it, pulling back? Yep. Yeah. Am I, am I getting the, uh, the, I get kind of this electrical tingling feeling sometimes that usually is a confirmation of something. Yep. And, and so it's just kind of playing with and asking the right questions in a way that it's kind of a yes or no. So I can kind of get a feel for it. But I love at the end where again, she was so, non-committal you know and it's like okay we'll flip a coin and let the coin decide for you uh -huh. and if you're relieved with the answer yep. then you know that's what you're supposed to do if like she did she's like oh i was disappointed i wanted it to be heads well again you have your answer you just answered your question yeah at that point yep. and so now you have the decision now you just gotta you know take the action and yeah. kind of move move on to it yeah. You know yeah. Means. Then you actually have to, yeah, it's about the taking action. Uh, you know, it's not just to make the decision. Then you have to do something about that. You have to put those things in place to make that decision happen. Uh, mm -hmm. But it's, it's just been in interesting watching people over the last couple of weeks try to decide career choices and, um, you know, the stay go thing and the uh, should I go back to school situation and should I leave my husband situation? And, you know, I had one woman, she, and this is where emotions can cloud things. I'm all about, I will validate your emotions all day. I've got the emotions wheel sitting in my office. I'll hand it to you. We'll talk about your emotions. But sometimes the emotional part of you gets in the way of, I don't want to say what should happen, but you know, this gal was in a very abusive relationship and we did the stay, go quadrant. We flipped the damn coin. She still couldn't make a decision. And she fi I finally said, okay, well, let's look at your needs. And we categorized it, emotional, physical, financial, sexual. Uh, uh, just, we kind of broke it all down. And I said, on a scale of one to 10, how much are these being fulfilled by your partner? And when she saw that every single one was a two, wow. and she looked at that in a pile and went, what am I doing here? And I said, I don't know. You have to make that decision. I said, I'm not telling you what to do. I'm asking you questions to help you come to that conclusion yourself. Now, I don't know if she finally left, but man, in looking at that on in black and white on the paper, how unfulfilled she was and being abused on top of it, mm -hmm. you know, it's it's hard to deny that that stuff. Her emotions couldn't argue with that at that point. Yeah. Well, and I know, you know, for for a lot of the bigger life decisions, you know, uh it can be hard. I mean, we want to sit on the fence and we, and we know that, you know, with every decision, there's consequences. And, and sometimes we look at it and we think, man, I don't really want to go through that. Yeah. Right. So it was, you know, like, like me with my last, last marriage divorce, right. It's just like, I really don't want to start over again. Yep. And so for, for years, I kind of have this, man, I don't really want to start over again. I've done this how many times in my life? I don't want to do this again. Yep. But, you know, again, I kept sitting with it and, and kind of narrowed it down to, you know, what are the right questions to ask to? Yeah. And I, and I think sometimes, you know, in making, making a decision, we have to be asking the right question. And so like that with my last relationship, I sat with that for, for, for many months trying to figure out what really is the right 
question to ask on should I stay or should I go, uh -huh. right? And when I finally figured out what the right answer was, I still didn't, couldn't kind of get the answer myself. I, I wasn't feeling or had the confirmation. And so I talked with my mentor and, and kind of asked the right question, right? And he looked at me and he's like, no. <laughs> and the minute that he said that, you know, it's it's like that woman. It was it was the answer that I wanted to hear or knew that I already kind of knew was the yeah. right answer, but I didn't have the courage to admit it. Yeah. And, and when he said that, I mean, I broke down, I started bawling, uh, and I felt this lightness, you know, on me. And it's like, okay, well, that's that's that decision is made. I'm leaving. Yep. And and then the next question was, you know, I think I need to move physically, but where do I move physically to? Is uh, it some other place in LA? Is it somewhere else in the country? Is it outside of the country? Where is it? And it was the same thing. I was I was having a hard time kind of getting that, but I got the first answer, right? When I talked to him later that evening, right? As I'm kind of contemplating and doing stuff, I get up and move around and all of a sudden, literally, it was like this electric uh, energy flow sure. all the way through my body. And it's like, there's your answer. And I'm like, fuck, okay, got it. Uh -huh. Right. And I knew exactly what I needed to do at that point. Wow. But I couldn't answer that second question until I kind of <laughs> had the first question answered too. Yep. Right. But it was, it was sometimes we have to wait for the answers a little bit and that that's often the, the, the better course of action. Um, now there's two sides of it, right? Because again, you can just make quick decisions and if it's the wrong decision, you make a different one. Correct. But if it's a major life decision, like, do I stay in the relationship? Do I yeah. go? I wouldn't necessarily suggest that. Yeah, you can't often undo that one. <laughs> no, but, you yeah. know, do I buy chicken or, or beef this week? <laughs> yeah, which restaurant? Right. What, do I, what do I get it? You know, it, Bob's Big Boy. It's like, just yeah, the, it doesn't really matter. Those those kind of things, those decisions probably don't matter. And again, if you make if you make a wrong decision, then you just don't do it again next time. Right. Those. Yeah those have a have much less of a consequence than some of these bigger things yeah one of the books that i had to read for school um for the psychedelic program that i'm finishing up and i, I don't remember which book it, i've got a house full of books but one of the things it was talking about was making decisions and making big life decisions and how we often agonize over these things that don't need to be made and the author of this book was talking about how to quickly make these decisions from, from, you know, like subconscious basically. And he was out to lunch with a friend and the menu came and the guy went, okay, so, you know, let me know when you are ready to order. And his friend went, wait, you know what you want already? And he goes, yeah. And he goes, have you ever been here before? And he goes, no, it's not like I'm here all the time and I know what I want. I just, I made a choice. And the friend was baffled. Mm -hmm. He's like, how did you do that that fast? And he said, I tell you, 90% of the time, I love my meal. It is rare I'm unhappy with it. And in that 10%, it's still good. Maybe something could have been better. Okay, maybe. And he said, by practicing little things like that, like making those snap decisions, you, you do it, you pick it, then the big decisions start to become easier mm -hmm. because you're used to making it. And that's how I am with menus. I glance and I'm like, oh, I know. Yep. Could there have been something better on the menu? Maybe, but what I just picked was, great you know so it's like that's a great way to practice decision making yeah. um and you know we do have there's of course i can't remember the name of this book either i'm losing i think i'm i think i'm losing it jason <laughs> we're just getting older we're just getting older i don't know it's the hat it's just squishing everything um but it was talking about decision fatigue and it said you know we are this teeny little writer that's our conscious our like linear brain and we're on this giant elephant which is the emotional part of us and throughout the course of the day, we're making these decisions and we're riding the elephant. And eventually the elephant gets tired of being led all over the place. And the elephant sort of revolts and just starts to run through and grab the ice cream and make the bad decision, you know, da 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 da, because it's exhausted. And this poor little man, this rider can't control the elephant anymore. And it was this whole book about making decisions and, you know, leading with, with um, kind of conscious leadership. And it was an incredible, but it was such a great example which is why I said earlier, you shouldn't go to the grocery store at the end of the day. <laughs> you're tired. That, your elephant has taken over and you can't possibly, you know, do these things. 
and it had all these great examples about people making putting protocols into place to make decisions easier things like paper towel holders and things at gas stations i mean all these incredible uh examples of of making opportunities for yourself to make those decisions easier. So try to put some of those things in play. And be, while, before I edit this episode, I'll find that book and put the title down because it was the whole elephant rider thing. Was It was a really great business book. It was a really great book. Yeah, and I think it's, you know, that's a great way of kind of, I mean, just like anything in life, we just got to practice. Oh, 100%. And so if, if you practice just making some of those, you know, smaller decisions like that quicker and realizing you can always make a different choice right you yes. can always make a different choice and you know we brought up the the idea of decision fatigue a few times too and and again that's why there there are a lot of things that you can do in your life to reduce the decision fatigue right uh -huh. so uh you know little things that that don't really matter right even like what do i wear today right i mean there's the whole story steve jobs you know, he wore the same, there's, there's a couple of reasons why he, why he wore that black turtleneck and jeans right. almost for years and years and years and years. There's a story behind it because the guy who made the shirts sent him like a hundred of them. And Steve's like, what the hell am I going to do with a hundred shirts? Right. So he just, he just started wearing them, but it was a way of reducing decision fatigue for him. And so you yeah. see this a lot in people who are very busy CEOs, you yep. know, uh, heads of state, things like that. There's, there's little decisions like that that they just kind of give over to somebody else or mm. they just don't worry about. They just wear the same thing every day. It doesn't matter what I wear, right? Right. For me, it's like, yeah, I show up. This is my favorite sweater. So when it's cold out, you're probably going to see me wearing this, right? Because yeah. I don't even think about it. And I just tend to grab whatever's on the top of my pile. So I tend to wear the same two or three things all yep. the time, right? And, but that's a way for me to not have to worry about those kinds of decisions as well, right? Yeah. Is it reduces that so I can spend my energy more on making the decisions that, that I, I need to make. Yep. And kind of the other side of it is uh, for a lot of the decisions, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter, you know, whether you order, you know, the, the filet or if you order the, the salmon on the menu it doesn't matter yeah really uh and so we end up wasting a lot of time and energy on that you know even some of the bigger things you know should i go back to school or should i not well i don't know if you want to go back to school go back to school it doesn't matter whether you do or not it's not right. like your whole life hinges on this particular thing right and i think we're so worried that we're gonna make the wrong choice 100 percent. yep that we don't make a choice but not making a choice is making is a, a choice, choice <laughs> right yeah yeah no i was just gonna say that same thing yeah and we put so much pressure on ourselves and you know other than kids and tattoos and one of those is negligible um there's not a lot of decisions that you can't undo i'll let you decide which one um <laughs> so yeah so you know write the pros and cons talk to a trusted person flip a coin. You know, that is just seriously one of my favorite techniques because it really does tell you, you know, what your, what your true desire is. And then, you know, um, I remember when I was debating about leaving my ex-husband, there's a book called too good to leave, too bad to stay. Mm. And it was the same thing. It's like, when it's good, it's great. When it's bad, it's bad. And you know, which are you getting every moment of the day? And for so long, I was like, I'm leaving. And then everything would be good for a while. That was the cycle. Right. And then I'd be like, oh, it's terrible again. I'm going to leave. And then it would get good again. And it was like, it was, it was exhausting to be pulled in two different directions for so long. And the night I decided to go, it was the most liberating feeling I ever had. I could feel all this weight lifted off my body. So, you know, you'll feel better once you make that decision. And I understand they're so difficult. It was not an easy decision. It took me years. And just like you said, it takes you years sometimes to make these decisions. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, there's most of my major life decisions. It hasn't been a, you know, I'm getting better at it. I'm, I'm yeah. getting quicker a lot of times because again, I'm 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 tuning in more for what my higher self really needs instead of just trying to think yeah. about it from in 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 this 3D kind of space. But it's it's you know it does, and I'm still I'm still learning you know, how to do it as well. And I think, you know, that point that you brought up with that title of the book is, you know, so much of the time too, we kind of settle for good or okay. Yeah, it's good when, enough. When we could have great 
too. And I, and I think sometimes that's, that's one of the things because subconsciously we're kind of afraid of that opportunity loss, you know, of I'm going to give up something that's right. okay or good. And, and if I'm going to, if I'm going to give that up, you know, what's going to happen? What if there's and, nothing better? Yeah. But, but what's, what's interesting. And again, this goes back to my mentor is, is so many, I've heard him say this so many times to, to myself and to other people that, that are around him where they'll, they'll kind of say something like, you know, yeah, but I'm, I'm not really sure, you know, what's, what's going to happen, you know, are things going to be better or are they going to be worse kind of thing? And he's like, well, I think it's probably going to be pretty amazing, whatever you decide, you know, kind of a thing like, like, you know, it's, it's, uh, you know, we don't need to worry necessarily about it. It's just like, just go for it because, you know, yeah. it's, it's going to be pretty, uh, pretty great. Um, and so we can stop kind of settling for good and really go for the great, um, yeah. as well. Yeah, so, I agree. Because again, because again, just like with you, right? I mean, you're getting married here. Surely you're in a wonderful relationship yeah. with a wonderful guy. And and you wouldn't have you wouldn't have that if you hadn't given up the kind of good to bad back and forth little thing that you had in your past relationship. So. Yeah. And it was probably two we're hit we just hit four and a half years. Uh seems crazy. But about two years ago, probably I was you know, kind of beating myself for why didn't I go sooner and why didn't I leave sooner and why did I put up with this and da da da. And my partner said, well, you know, you've always said that if you guys split up, you wanted to leave Santa Barbara. And I said, yeah, I probably would have headed back to L.A. And he goes, OK, so had you left four or five years ago, you and I wouldn't have met. You'd probably either be with somebody else already or you would have left Santa Barbara and I would never have met you. And I'm like, uh, yeah, I mean, again, it is that like hindsight, just, you know, not justification, but like, you know, kind of justification of what could be considered just chaos. But if those things are preordained, which I kind of believe they are, I truly believe that Eric and I were meant to be together. And that wouldn't have happened had I left five, six years ago. So, you know. Well, and that's why I think, too, because I'll do the same thing sometimes. I'll kind of beat myself up, too. Like, why didn't I see this sooner? Because I wasn't supposed to see it sooner. Right, because you did. I was, I was supposed to learn whatever I was supposed to learn. You know, I was supposed to hang out or do something, you know, longer for some reason as well. I mean, there, there's some learning or some growth in that whole process, too. And, and yep. so instead of beating ourselves up about it, you know, just realize that, yeah, everything does kind of unfold exactly the way it's supposed to. Yeah. Or let me throw a, a sort of a spiritual wrench in that. Or we were there so the other person could finish some sort of learning. Correct. Somehow yeah, it, go, it goes on both sides. Both, somehow both sides the too. timing was there so that maybe they could be learning a lesson or give them an opportunity to grow or we don't know. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm looking for and that. We don't, and we don't have to know either, no. which is a I'm nice thing. For, I'm looking for that life handbook that I was given when I was born and I can't find it. <laughs> you were given a handbook? <laughs> Weren't you given a handbook? On how this no. whole planet thing works? <laughs> no. Shit, I gotta find that. I, I, so I, did, I, I didn't get one when I came here. I didn't get one when I became a dad either, right? Oh, uh, so, yeah, I don't have no, that one. No, I can't no, help no, you with that. Yeah, yeah. So anyway. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> we just gotta figure it out along the way. Oh, man. I should have written it all down. Okay, I'll start now. All right, I'm Kathy Groover. I can be reached at kathygroover.coach. And I'm Jason Mefford. I can be reached at jasonmefford.com. So go out, have a great uh, rest of your week. And... Uh, make some decisions and uh, we'll catch you on the next episode. So see you later. Yeah.